Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the 2021 Healthcare Purchasing News Healthcare Professionals Industry Forum. My name is Ebony Smith, Managing Editor for HPN. I'm excited to have with me here PJ Piper, President and CEO of Bar UV Technologies, which he founded in 2016. Through his work with NASA and the Air Force, he has proven the microbiological efficacy of krypton disinfection lighting on multiple pathogens, developed global research and development facilities, and worked to commercialize products in the medical, defense, and other markets. Today, PJ will be discussing a critical topic, krypton disinfection lighting for healthcare facilities and EMS vehicles. COVID-19, MRSA, and C. diff are a big challenge for the healthcare industry. Disinfection is critical to ensuring healthy and safe patient care in transportation settings. PJ will provide an introduction of 222 nanometer bar UV technology krypton disinfection lighting. Explain why the lighting is effective and safe to sanitize air and surfaces in occupied spaces and discuss customer cases, applications and installations. So PJ, let's get started with today's presentation. Thank you, Ebony, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to share more about Krypton disinfection lighting for healthcare facilities and EMS vehicles. The best practices uh, that we've been using to contain the spread of COVID-19 have not been enough. Um, they're good, but they're hard to comply to in practice. And what I mean by that is social distancing is hard to stay six feet away from everyone or where everyone else has been for for the last two to three hours when you have to walk through the same door or to wear a face mask correctly, particularly when some of the states are even not mandating that people wear them anymore uh, now at all. Um, and of course, hand hygiene has always been a challenge um, for, for people to, to get adequate protection. So Krypton disinfection lighting is a fourth leg of the disinfection stool that we think is incredibly valuable because it's not prone to human error um, and it covers both the air and the surfaces um, throughout an occupied facility and provides everybody within that facility with the equivalent of an extra N95 mask. Far UV is the global leader in 222 nanometer technology since 2016. We didn't just start with this um, during the pandemic. Um, we started working under contract with NASA uh, to develop um, uh, solutions for foodborne illness, E. coli, salmonella, et cetera. We, we changed, um, not changed, but we added uh, looking at hospital acquired infections uh, and got some awards from the US Army there. And more recently, um, over the course of the last year, have been very involved with the Air Force, specifically focusing on mitigation of, of, of SARS-CoV-2. Um, we are made in the United States. We're a proud member of International Ultraviolet Light Association and the American Society for Photobiology, as well as multiple academic and, um, and corporate partners. We are the preferred supplier for uh, the government because of our SBIR status and have even been issued national stock numbers as a critical stockpile uh, for our defense community. Um, we didn't just start again recently so we've been doing all the microbiological research to to confirm the efficacy and safety of, of far far uv uh, and not only that have taken even beyond the academic approach into the product development and applications development expertise to know that this works in practice in the field um, so we're far from the only ones involved in this as i mentioned on the previous side columbia university medical center but there's Harvard Medical School, there's Johns Hopkins, and there's a whole host of other uh, uh, academically oriented um, reputable journals that are printed as well as a variety of industry journals, including um, more recently Boeing, who's active in the space. Um, as I mentioned, we got our start in the defense uh, sector or in the government contracts under our SBIRs. Uh, not surprisingly then, um, our first installations were on Air Force bases. And our product is really, it, it's demonstrated well here. It looks and acts a lot like a smoke detector. It's a set it and forget it solution that the second day after it's installed, nobody even notices is there. But it's providing far UV ultraviolet light that disinfects all of the air and surfaces 
that either someone can breathe or someone can touch the tops of these surfaces and or any of the air that's in this, in, in this region. We're not, of course, only focused on the defense markets. We've been very actively involved in the healthcare uh, facilities and vehicles, and we'll talk about those a little bit more in detail given, given the nature of this specific presentation. But we're also involved in transportation industry, where if you go into the Atlanta airport, you'll see our lights throughout uh, the Delta terminal. Um, if you are in coach buses, if you're traveling, um, these are all confined spaces where people have a higher traffic and a higher risk of of um, transmitting the disease. Of course, there's hospitals, and more, uh, more recently, we've been very involved with schools, um, reopening the schools, keeping the schools open. And we're talk we'll talk a little bit more about our FEMA and other government um, support there in a little bit. Um, first question I always get uh, with far ultraviolet light is, wait a minute, ultraviolet light, is, is that safe for you? I've heard since childhood that you know, I need to wear sunscreen. And the answer is they're very, they're very different types of, of UV. So there's the UV that you get when you go outside, the kind that can actually penetrate the ozone and come to the Earth's atmosphere. That's known as UVB, around 300 nanometers. And that actually can penetrate the skin and give you skin cancer over time if you're out too long. Um, UVC is more what you may be familiar with in your uh, medical settings, in your operating rooms, where you've got a little robot that kind of goes around in the room. That's at about 254 nanometers that is much less penetrating than sunburn, but it can still penetrate the skin over time. And so basically this illustration shows that it can kill the airborne and surface uh, particles, but it can also you know, get down into the basal layer um, and, and cause some issues over time. 222 nanometer light, which we're talking about, far UV, is typically less than 230 nanometers and actually peaks at about 222 nanometers. This light simply cannot penetrate any human or animal cell. And as a result, it is, it is perfectly safe. Now, the question always is, well, at what level, since in an academic community, they would never say never, um, how safe is it? And so they establish things in probabilities. And fortunately, the American Society for Photobiology um, just had a paper um, presented this fall which actually showed at every wavelength what the incidence of transmission through the stratum corneum might be, and as a result, how that translated into the risk of skin cancer. And while yes, 254, there can be some risk up here where you could, you know, one person in every 3,000 could get it. Um, it turns out at 222, the transmission is so low that it literally is about one person in 100 quadrillion that can get this. So infinitely low probability. Basically, everything in your kitchen is far, far more dangerous than far UV light. Um, in terms of standards and compliance, uh, there have been well-known uh, limits that have been in place for decades um, that we comply with. None of our uh, fixtures uh, emit light above any of these thresholds. And as a result, whether this was used five years ago, 10 years ago, or 20 years ago, um, they were deemed safe. An important question we often get from the medical community is, are you FDA approved? And the answer is no, because we're not a medical device. We do not cure COVID, nor, do we, nor are we intended to treat people uh, for COVID. What we do is we treat the particles or the respiratory particles that someone exhales. 100% of the contamination events in your facility are related to somebody breathing, talking, coughing, or sneezing into that space. And the second that happens, our far UV light intersects it in the air or the surfaces that they fall to and starts disinfecting that. When we described this to the FDA, they said, absolutely, you are not a medical device. Instead, you are regulated by the Environmental Protection Agency. So we went to the EPA and we got our establishment number and we comply with all people labeling requirements. Another question we often get is, why is 222 nanometers even more effective than 254? And this is an interesting one and, and probably easier to follow up with. But suffice it to say, 254 always relied on disabling or deactivating the DNA, which would prevent it from replicating. So, um, and, and it was very effective at doing that. And that's why it's used in 50% of our drinking water and 70% of our, our operating rooms already. But what it really doesn't do that well is it doesn't make sure it stays dead because regular UV deactivates, but it can come back to life with either blue light uh, or fluorescent lights. 
Um, and the other thing is at 222, the primary kill mechanism is we actually destroy the protein. So whereas the 254 penetrates in to try to deactivate the DNA here, 222 starts on the outside. And the first thing it does is it blows all these Shrek-like horns off, which are the, the, the means of, of infectivity of the pathogen. And as a result, it can no longer uh, uh, infect anything. It also can't come back to life with photoreactivation because there's virtually nothing holding it. The skin is just torn off the, torn off the pathogen. Um, we are not a COVID only solution. In fact, before, as I mentioned, uh, we were targeting MRSA and C. diff, and we're very effectively ridding environments of MRSA and C. diff, which are, are two of the most prevalent and, and, and dangerous um, pathogens involved in healthcare settings. So, you know, if we look at a, at a top 10 list or a top 20 list, they're going to have the hospital acquired infections. I don't even have the foodborne illnesses like E. coli, Salmonella, Listeria on here. Um, but even things like the common cold and the flu and strep throat and all these other things that we've just been accustomed to living with can now be treated. And they can be treated with in a continuous autonomous way that doesn't change how you act and doesn't require additional, uh, additional steps to implement. And I think we're going to see the eradication of disease on earth on, on many, many of these uh, pathogens going forward. And that's going to make this single disinfection solution the most important for the control of the microorganisms we can't see as light is to the benefit of everything else we can. These are a few of our uh, current sealing, sealing unit products, which is almost most of what we're actually selling today. Um, and so this unit, the Krypton 11, is typically used in our mobile applications, buses, ambulances, um, things like that, all the way up to more of our office settings. Uh, standard ceiling heights up to about 11 feet. For things like gymnasiums or entrance ways or taller uh, areas, maybe there's a maybe there's a, a, a COVID area where they've had to, to, to get a much greater area to, to, to house people in. This could be very effective because it covers a greater amount of square footage, um, over a thousand square feet in many cases for the for the Krypton 36. Um, whereas this would typically cover about 250 square feet. Of course, you don't need to cover every square foot because you don't need to cover your closets and things where people aren't. You tend to focus on your highest traffic, highest risk areas. Um, another uh, product that we've recently launched is a floor lamp. And so with this one, you don't even require any electrical installation. So even though it's easy to install, it's much like a smoke detector to install, very simple, simple thing that any electrician can do. This one, literally, you take it out of the box and you deploy it immediately. You just plug it in the wall. Um, and so we've seen a lot more interest in this in vaccination areas and in a lot of our government counterparts in, in getting something out there quickly um, to the people in most need. We also have a handful of new devices coming out that are high powered wands. Um, and this would be typically used more in cockpit disinfection where you're trying to treat 500 knobs. You don't want to pour chemicals on this. Um, but you want to, you, you want to treat it quickly uh, in between flights and protect the, the, the pilots on that. So we have a technology and licensing agreement with Boeing where we're specifically producing that for the airline industry, which dovetails well into the airports, which I, I showed some pictures of earlier. Um, in terms of the product, it comes in a box. You open the box, very, very simple and easy installation. It's a light, it's a cord to pop. Uh, to, to connect it to power and it has a driver. So if you have a drop ceiling, you simply connect it to the drop ceiling here. If you don't have drywall ceiling, it's installed just like a regular ceiling light. Very easy to validate the performance because there are NIST calibrated meters now available uh, either from us or from others um, where you can validate the 222 nanometer performance. 254 nanometer meters do not work on 222 because they're calibrated based on assumption rather than the actual light. Um, we do certify and our network of installers certifies our installations afterwards. So you'll know exactly how many, you know, 90% disinfections you'll get uh, throughout the course of your day. And we welcome, you know, any additional testing you might want to do internally microbiological testing, either through ATP meters or, or Petri dishes or the like in your facilities. There's been a lot done so far, but we welcome more. Um, in terms of the healthcare settings, um, we typically see two primary installations. One is in mobile settings, and that would be ambulances. We really only need about one light per ambulance, and that covers most of the surfaces and air in that. 
And it's really a wonderful thing because, you know, you're bringing in people, you have to bring them in. Um, oftentimes they won't be wearing a mask. So it can be a very contaminated space very quickly. And to have this level of persistent, autonomous, continuous disinfection um, brings a lot of confidence um, to the first responders that are using it. And we're finding that to be, um, people are demanding that, you know, they, they, they have this after they've, they've, they've had a little bit of uh, uh, experience with it. In the fixed settings, we're often used more in waiting rooms, uh, really throughout the facility, but only again, the highest risk, highest traffic. So everybody comes in the front door into the waiting room, they check in, you're gonna wanna cover these areas. You're also gonna wanna cover the areas where, where people are either uh, put in beds or, or in stations and, and their caretakers are interacting. You know, when there's, when there's people you don't know if they're symptomatic or asymptomatic, um, better safe than soaring. It's the same reason you wear a mask would be the same reason you use far UV. Um, we have a variety of installations and testimonials and all the rest of that we can give you. We don't need to do the level of fluence maps now that we've done so many installations and we can kind of give you guidance on how many you would need based on discussions with you. Uh, we are manufacturing out of an ISO 9001 facility and are expanding to handle all the needs that we foresee coming. Um, and the, the, the needs are really um, being uh, significantly fueled by the government support. So FEMA has increased their grant funding uh, for public assistance grants from 75% to 100%, um, including a whole host of medical and emergency services. You can see ambulance, you can see virtually any kind of medical facility from hospitals to medical clinics, et cetera, in that, not to mention schools and all of these other areas. So wonderful. The stimulus plan is going to have even more. And so um, really excited. Thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, share this information with you. And I look forward to taking any questions. Thank you, PJ. That was a fascinating presentation. I have a few questions for you. How can someone get these applications? Great question. Um, the easiest way right now is uh, to contact us either at info at faruv.com or uh, you can call direct at 816-492-7020. We are also working um, with some of the more prominent uh, distributors in the healthcare space and hope to be uh, to have those products uh, available soon through those venues as well. Okay, great. And are there any risks with ozone? Yeah, we do get that question every now and then. Ozone is typically created uh, by wavelengths less than 200 nanometers, of which we have very, very little uh, wavelengths there. Um, so little that we haven't actually been able to detect ozone um, with, with our fixtures um, at this point. Um, and as a result, uh, if any does exist, it's so far below the, uh, the, the OSHA limits that, that it's, not, it's not an issue. Okay. What is the cost of the applications? Yeah, I kind of referred to that at the end. Um, the, the super exciting thing about where we are right now is um, uh, there is a tremendous momentum for government support right now to end this pandemic and to hopefully put in place um, procedures and equipment uh, to help mitigate future events. And so right now FEMA has up their, um, up their amount of support to 100% and, and many of the, 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 uh, the healthcare applications uh, will qualify or should qualify for that. Um, and so they're basically free. Um, um, and hopefully uh, with the new stimulus bill, we'll also be able to uh, provide the same opportunities for for-profit institutions. Um, in the meantime, um, we can talk about uh, the pricing for your facilities and the amount that you would need, you know, on a case-by-case -case situation, as you call it. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank okay. you. That wraps up our presentation today. It has been great speaking with you, PJ. Thanks so much for sharing this information with us. On behalf of our UV Technologies and HPN, Thank you everyone for logging on to watch. Don't miss the next session in this forum. Click the link at the top of your screen to return to your event hub. Bye and take good care.